Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining our diagnostic training session today. Now, this is a pre-recorded session this week as I'm traveling. So if you do have any questions, though, uh, on Zoom, just uh, reply to the email that you got, the comp com confirmation email that you got, uh, and uh, I'll be able to get those and answer those through my email. If you're watching on YouTube, just leave a comment underneath the video, and I'll get to those. And then on Facebook, same thing, leave a comment underneath the video, and I'll get to those as well. So my name is Jason Gabrinas. I'm one of Snap-on's National Diagnostic Technical Trainers. Been in the training department the last 10 years or so, traveling around North America, helping techs and shop owners get the most out of their diagnostic equipment. Before I did that, I was a couple of years as a diagnostic sales rep with Snap-on. So I had about 30 different franchisees I worked with, as well as the shops that they service in order to help everyone get the most out of their diagnostic needs. Then before that, it was eight years at Subaru. So worked in a dealership and over time, I guess, became the default diag guy in the shop. Uh, so I always ended up with the drivability problems, the intermittent problems, the weird wiring problems that would show up on those cars. And that's really where I cut my diagnostic teeth, was trying to figure out all those weird head scratcher cars that would come into my bay. And before that, a bunch of other miscellaneous wrenching jobs. Been a little over 25 years under hood experience for me. Our topic today is diagnostics comparisons. We're going to compare between medium versus light duty vehicles and even versus heavy duty vehicles because there's a couple different tools that you would need to use between them. They are configured differently. They're set up differently. You'll get similar information, but sometimes, uh, you know, one type of tool might be better suited for the type of vehicle you're working on. And when we get really kind of into the weeds is when we get down to these, the, uh, the medium duty vehicles, uh, where your class fours and fives and sixes, uh, where it's not a big rig. Bigger than a one-ton truck, but you know what do I use? And, and sometimes the configuration can be a little. So we think about building just the general automobile, right? Like a, like this uh, Impala right here, right? So it's a GM vehicle. So in ninety-nine percent of the cases, it's going to be a GM engine, a GM transmission, and a GM axles in there. So it's it's all going to be made by the same manufacturer, generally in the same factory, and all that. Now there's there's some vehicles where maybe it's got a you know, different engine, but we're not talking about that. Uh, just a you know generally an automobile is going to be made by one manufacturer. It's going to be one thing, and, and that's it, one source. Now when it comes to a commercial vehicle, a large truck, uh, the purchaser, whoever it happens to be, is going to specify what make they want and then what parts they want on a build sheet. So you can select from these different engines, these different transmissions. And then they're assembled with those spe specific parts to whatever the person ordering it wants. Uh, for example, if I have a heavy duty truck, it could have a Cat, Cummins, Detroit, Mercedes, Mack, or Volvo engine. Could be a Kenworth body, could be a Peterbilt body, uh, could be an Allison Eaton, Mack, Meritor, Spicer, Tremec, or uh, what have you transmission, Bendix or Meritor brakes. Does it have four channels? Does it have six channels? Eaton Fuller rear end, Dana Spicer, whatever it happens to be, all of these things could be in a large truck because they're specced out to whatever the truck buyer needs. Maybe there's a certain engine that's more durable for whatever they're doing. Maybe they're in hilly country, so they need a, a different type of engine for that or a different type of transmission, right? So it's specced to the manufacturer. And this comes into play a little bit later when we talk about the heavy duty scan tool and how it works going into the vehicle. Then we get to the medium vehicles. So a lot of times it's gonna be one OEM. So a Ford F550 is probably gonna be mostly Ford parts, but there could be some non OEM components like maybe air brakes. Maybe they wanted to add air, a Bendix air brake system to it at an upfitter and uh, you still could. So when you get into this range of above maybe like an F-350, it's silver, silver Auto 3500, that sort of vehicle, it's going to get maybe a little gray. Having our different vehicle classes, right? So it goes all the way from class one to class eight. So class one, 6,000 pounds or less. That's going to be like Ford Ranger, little pickup truck, class two. And uh, just to kind of keep it straight in your head, and it pretty much works out this way, if you think about uh, the the number of the model of the truck, so say it was a Ford, we'd have an F-150 for class one, F-250 for class two, F-350 for class three, and so on and so forth, up to a 750, which is, is there. 
Now, class A, it's going to be um, pretty much relegated to your tractor trailers, do, things with dual rear axles, yeah, cement mixers, giant dump trucks, you know, big, big, big things. 33,001 pounds GVW to weigh, you know, whatever it happens to be is considered a class A truck. All right. So when we get into this middle ground, because if you're using a snap-on scan tool, you know, Zeus or a Solus or an Apollo or a Triton or, or, or a Modus or what have you, uh, they're going to cover class one through five. We're going to be able to see, you know, uh, F 550s in there, 5500 series Rams in there. Um, but when it gets into like box trucks, Isuzu's, things like that, he knows no. Uh, so that's why we have another tool that's out there as well, which would be the ProLink series. So that's a snap on branded too. And that'll cover the whole range from class one to class eight with a big butt. But it doesn't necessarily have all the capabilities of these tools when it comes down to these lower classes, class five and below. You're probably going to have way more capability with the, uh, you know, the, the snap on light duty scanners versus doing light and medium truck with the pro link now when it comes to heavy duty trucks absolutely that's that, that's definitely the way to go so we take an example this is out of the coverage guide on the light and medium truck software in the pro link they cover from 99 to 2021 so right there you know it's it's going to be uh any older vehicles you're not going to be able to cover which you know it's fine uh and it goes up to 2021 and then you'll see Due to how the tool handles scanning a vehicle, because it usually does it by system. So these are the different engines that are covered. And it, it's, it's mostly your big ones, you know, six, seven Cummins and a Dodge. Uh, GM, quite a few of the engines there, too, even all the Duramaxes. Uh, some brake and transmission stuff you'll get out of there, a little bit of airbag body and such. The Suzu it'll cover, like your NPRs. Uh, Fords by engine, a little bit of brakes and transmission in these as well. Navistar, and then Workhorse. Right? So all the different engines that could be in those vehicles. It's based, based by engines. It's going to be mostly engine stuff when it comes to the ProLink. And then if you need to get into body modules, ADOS, stuff like that, it's going to be more hit or miss with those. Uh, and then as far as it comes with the larger vehicles, the, the heavy trucks, you know, Cummins engines, International engines, Detroit, Caterpillar, Hino. Uh, there's your light and medium truck, Volvo Mac, Packard. ABS, which would be Bendix, Eaton, Wabash, Haldex, and Wabco, uh, Allison Transmissions, PSI Engines. Uh, that's everything that would be available all in one master kit. Now, you can also, the other thing about the other difference between this tool and maybe like a Zeus or a Triton or an Apollo is you pick and choose which ones you want. So if you buy the master kit, that's the entire, comes with everything. Or you can just get the starter kit which comes with generic OBD, and then you can add on, well, I only work on Cummins engines, then you can just get Cummins. Right? So it's it's kind of a piecemeal approach, but when you buy it, you own it, which is nice too. There's no subscription uh, involved with that. And it's considerably less than if you were to buy factory software from all the other manufacturers. It's pretty well comparable in uh, performance. So how do I know what tool I'm going to need to use? Well, the first thing is going to be, well, what plug are we using? What connector do we have? We have our six pin J1587, which is pretty popular. That's the older protocol on trucks, um, but it could also be used for brake systems, air brakes, stuff like that. Uh, the J1939 is the newer nine pin connector. That's any truck with a can and things like that. Uh, and then we get OBD2, which is gonna be your general light and medium duty vehicle. So you could get feasibly a medium duty truck that has both an OBD2 port and maybe a J1587 port for air brakes or a J1939 port for something else, whatever it happens to be. So that'll be your first indication as to what kind of tool you, you need to use. If you're, if you're gonna, if you want the most capability, it's gonna be Solus, Apollo, Triton, Zeus, those types of tools with the OBD2 port. The other two, it's gonna be best used with the Pro. So if you have one with both, maybe you might need both, depending on what you're trying to diagnose. And then the codes are built different as well. So OBD2, we know the codes. We have our P codes, B codes, C codes, U codes. And then within those codes, we have our subsets with all of the uh, the numbers, right? So 
P01 twos are fuel and air metering. P03 is our ignition system. 04 is our auxiliary. 05 is our vehicle speed and idle. 06 is computer and auxiliary. 789 are transmission. And then when we get into the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, it's hot, uh, hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles, code specific to those types of systems in there as well. So that, that's just kind of how they lay them out. And I think if you've been working in automotive long enough, you, you would be fairly familiar with that, you know, P code, P code, C code. When it comes to trucks though, they are separated out. There's, there's different uh, numbers, right? So we have our mid, which is our message ID. I think of it as module ID, right? So what module is sending this message? PID, which is our parameter ID, which is pretty much the same thing as you would think about data PIDs. And then, or you could use a SID, which is a subsystem ID. So if it's, it's calling a code out of a subsystem. And then FMI, which is a failure mode indicator. So that's any uh, number eight, zero to 15. It's going to indicate if it's open, if it's short, if it's bad message, whatever it happens to be. There's 16 different variants that they will use across the board with that. And like I said, that's the older protocol of the six pin. And if we get into J1939, uh, they're laid out fairly similarly. So we have our SA, which is our source address, which would be the module, so engine transmission, whatever. SPN is going to be your suspect parameter number, which would be you know, my coolant temp sensor, my oxygen sensor. FMI is going to be your failure mode indicator. And that's once again, zero through 15, open, short, et cetera. So the codes are laid out a little bit differently. We'll look at Shopkey in a little while and see how we would have to look those up as well. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different depending on the vehicle that you have. So let's do a little comparison. You said this, this class is about diagnostic comparison, right? So we're going to, we hook up to a 2018 Ram 4500, both with the ProLink and then with uh, a Zeus, and we'll see the differences between the two. So on the ProLink, uh, after the main menu, you're going to hit vehicle scan, and then you can do a heavy duty scan or a light medium truck scan. So of course, this is a lighter medium truck. So we'll go in here. It's going to scan the vehicle and try to identify it. It'll see it's OBD2. And then you need to choose which application of the light and medium truck you're going to load. So it could be GM, Isuzu, Ford, Workhorse, Dodge, Ram, Napstar, OBD2, Generic, and Hummer. Actually, Hummer's in there as well because we actually use these. We would send these overseas during the wars to work on the Hummers there. So take that uh, as you will with the durability of the tool, right, if they're sending those over there. Uh, so, of course, this is the Dodge Ram, so we're going to choose that. Then we just hit OK down the bottom. And then it's going to say, okay, which modules on this vehicle do you want to load? And you can pick up to six. And well, there's only one, the engine. So we'll go into engine. And also this is a secure vehicle gateway vehicle. So we would need to set up through auto off and through our snap on account, just like we would with a Zeus or a Triton or Apollo. Um, this one was all set up. So we go through and it allows you in. It's going to land on the first page and it's going to tell you any faults on the vehicle. Now, in this case, we have no active faults, no inactive faults. This, this is a, just a known good vehicle. We just uh, hooked up just to compare. Now, as far as modules, we'll go into engine first. You'll see there are other modules on the vehicle. There are eight modules detected that are supported by this vehicle. Uh, and then we have um, the first thing it's going to do when you plug into a module is it's going to list all the data categories that we have. So if we go into like say engine data, we can see we get, you know, a few, few PIDs. All the PIDs on the vehicle are going to be sorted across, I think like 15 or 16 or 20 different categories. I didn't count them, uh, but there's a lot of different categories here. And there's, you know, it could be 10 or 20 or three PIDs depending on the category. So um, it's got a, it's got a fair amount of PIDs in there for coverage. Uh, if we go to transmission, same thing, got a bunch of different data categories. Uh, ABS, you're gonna have a few. BCM, fewer. Gateway, even fewer. Cluster, airbag. Uh, trailer brake control module, steering column, right? So we get, we get down to that amount of data. Then it goes to calibration. So that'd be like my uh, functional test bi-directional controls, things like that. Uh, so only engine. And then in there we have change vehicle functionality. So there's a couple of different functions that you can change, uh, enable and disable. Since it is a Cummins in this particular vehicle, 
we have a lot of the, there's some carryover with the Cummins in this one. So in this particular instance, you're going to have maybe a few more capabilities that you wouldn't have on the light duty tool, like setting road speeds and stuff like that, uh, which you can't do with uh, a Zeus or a Triton, but um, the light duty tools are going to give you more actual functional tests instead of just that. And if we get down to tests, you see we got engine, transmission, ABS, and clusters. So we got our input output controls, which are going to be our um, bidirectional controls, you know, lift pump relay on and off, that sort of thing. And then routines like a DPF regen, SCR, cat efficiency test, et cetera. So these are all tests that you would also find in a light duty vehicle. Transmission is just going to be your uh, bidirectionals, ABS, same thing, different valves. Cluster is going to have a self test. So that's what's available. And then as far as it presents data, what it does is you can choose the data you want to record and then it'll it'll put it over here. And then it will also do an overlay graph, which can be good or bad, I guess, depending on how you like viewing data, but it does record it all. Uh, you have to tell it to record and then you record it and you can also bookmark it, which is nice. Now on to our Zeus. So once again, security link on this vehicle. So we'll go in there. And you'll notice once we get on the main landing page, we have 26 different modules on this vehicle detected. Things like uh, you know dosing modules, drivetrain control, HVAC, and things that you wouldn't pick up on the Pro Link. So that's this, like I said, it's it's going to be the right tool for the job, and you may need more than one tool. You know, there's the rest of the uh, modules there as well. So if we go into engine, let's look at data. So as far as data. On this tool, it's separated out into three different categories. So in the engine category, there's 200 pits to choose from. On the exhaust category, it's 52. And then on the transmission, it's 128. So it's over 300 pits that are available in the ECM on this. I uh, wasn't able to count it up on the other one, but they're fairly close, pretty comparable. Uh, the amount of pits that they cover, it's just on the ProLink, it's separated out a lot more in the different categories. Also on you know, Zeus, Solus, Apollo, Triton, what have you, the light duty tools, you can select uh, PIDs from across lists on the majority of the manufacturers as well. So you could put all the data up to 250 PIDs uh, all in one place. So if you wanted to choose more from exhaust, transmission, and so As far as functional tests are concerned, you know, there's our uh, output controls on and off type of thing. There's that lift pump again. System tests are going to have uh, catalyst efficiency, DPF replacement, um, stationary DISA, which would be a regen, VGT, pre-align. And if we go into def tests, there's some more tests in there. Uh, and then we go into transmission as far as functional tests. Remember, we had made just pretty much the solenoids and stuff, so there we go. Also in the system tests in the transmission, there's a quick learn function, which is useful after you do transmission work. Now, that wasn't listed on the ProLink. And then as far as ABS or functional tests, remember how we had our valves and stuff. So we have ATM tests, there's our different inlet valves, outlet valves, pump, et cetera. So functional tests, fairly comparable. PIDs, fairly comparable. Number of modules covered, not even close. Um, really, if you want to get into like the ADOS or body control stuff, uh, things of that nature, you're going to be wanting to use one of the more light duty tools for those. And then if you want to get into the... Uh, uh, it's like air brakes and things like that you would need to use say the pro so let's go live on the tool right now and we will take a walk through on the zeus and the pro link and see uh see what we can find out all right here's my zeus and i have a 2016 ford f450 loaded in here uh you can see all the different modules like we said earlier you know the pro link's going to have engine transmission the main ones uh, but if you need to get any of these other ancillary mod modules, you would uh, need a light duty tool like this. Uh, so let's just do a quick code scan. I got a code programmed in here as well. Just to see what we kind of get. Cover 29 systems. And then we have this reductant heater circuit. So of course, in this case, I'm on a Zeus Plus. So we have intelligent diagnostics. So I can just go to diagnose and it's going to bring up my code specific vehicle specific information now there's obviously not nearly as many f450s out there as there would be like a 350 or a 250 so that's why we see a smaller number of results we'll actually look at the repair orders on there in a bit 
Uh, but you see no TSBs, a couple top repairs there. Got code specific data, code specific functional tests. Got a component test too. We do go up to class four on our component tests uh, between the different models. Like a 550, it's not, it's not there, but I suppose the 450 parts would be pretty much the same. Uh, but things like reductant heaters and stuff like that. And then if we come down to the bottom, this is definitely SureTrack information. 1,400 confirmed fixes on this. So there's, that's a uh, that's a pretty high number of <laughs> very common code, I guess, on that. Some more related fixes. And then if I go to link to ShopKey, see it comes up. And I get my search results. And then actually, let me go back to, uh, let me do the tank heater. Jones, cabin chassis. All right, so we can do our real fixes, top repairs, OEM testing. It's gonna walk you through how to how to test it. Flow chart, got a component testing will be with that. Wiring diagrams too. So we have our wiring diagrams where it drops you off on the right page with the right component. And then uh, you can go to where you need to go on the wiring diagram. All right, so we can see connector views and such with that. R and I remove or R and R remove and replace, right? Special tools that we need. Show you a bunch of pictures. I like how manufacturers have finally decided to go with color pictures. It's uh, it's been a nice change uh, in the last 10, 10 years or so at least. Uh, when they decided to change that, it's pretty nice. Uh, so there's how to walk through and test on that. That's that's stuff that I've shown you all before, right? So it's, it's your it's your standard workflow. Do a code scan, walk through. Oh yeah, I was gonna see how many repair work. So yeah, 6,044 repairs versus a more common vehicle, you get 20, 30, 40, even 100,000 plus repair orders. So it's not the most common vehicle, judging by that, but it's 16F450. Let me, let me even do this. Let's do this. Let's change it to a 350 and see the, see the difference. So if I went down just down to a 350, which is your more common Goes up to 8,352, right? 2,000 more repair order on them. So uh, it's year, make, model, and engine. It goes all the way down that far uh, in shop. So, all right, let's pull up the uh, ProLink now. All right, so here's the ProLink. You can see fairly simple on the layout. We have vehicle scan and vehicle history. You can scan a vehicle right out of history. You can actually see a lot of information that you got off the vehicle uh, when you did scan it. There's settings, applications, if I go in there, <clears throat> nice thing about that is it'll show you what's available on the tool or available to upgrade. You can actually upgrade right on the tool as well. It takes a second to get in there. There we go. So if you have any upgrades, it's gonna show on the left. Any available apps that haven't been installed are gonna show up as well. Anything coming soon and anything installed on the tool. So you can see the, all the Allisons are registered, the cats, free trials. So 10 free trials on each software. So even if you don't have that software package and a vehicle comes in and you need to scan it, you'll be able to, uh, to do that. Uh, you know, Eno International looks like there's trials on there. So Try it out. It kind of a gauge is to see whether or not you'll need it too, right? So you can see, oh, well, I use that 10 times in a week. I guess I need that software, right? Exit out of that. And then I need to get into my demo vehicle. Normally we'd go into vehicle scan. If I was actually hooked up to something, you do heavy duty or light medium truck from here. Uh, but in this case, the demo is under support and then troubleshoot. And then we have a demo scan. It's gonna scan through the vehicle. It's gonna detect what modules it finds. In this case, we have two, so engine and brakes. We'll hit okay. Then it's gonna go through and scan the vehicle. Check for codes, it's the first thing it does. And then it'll bring up our faults. Now, remember how I said the codes are laid out different on medium duty, heavy duty trucks, depending on what it is. So we have our SPN and FMI. And then down here, we have our PID and FMI. And then over here, we have our SID and FMI, depending on you know, what unit it's in and what how it's communicating with the vehicle. 
Uh, so for example, if I wanted to pull up this more information on this EGR though, this is kind of cool. So if I pull up my EGR, it's gonna load information on it. Okay, so there's my description. If there was freeze frame, that would be available as well. And then ProLink Repair Connect. So I can actually go into Repair Connect. If you have a subscription to Repair Connect, which you can, um, it'll allow you to go through and choose. So in this case, it, it chooses the vehicle. I hit go. Then it's going to load the trouble code information. It's going to link with Repair Connect and actually bring that information down the tool. So you can see we got code description. And then we up, up on top, we have testing specs, et cetera. So I'm gonna to go to testing. It's gonna give us a couple of different component tests we could do. So in this case, there's no information there. Uh, specs, any specifications needed? Any specifications? Uh, wiring and locator. So we can have locator, uh, you know, where's the EGR pressure sensor? It's gonna load an image of that. It's gonna show us where it's located on the vehicle. Uh, and then we have a uh, connector view say, so if I wanted to load a connector view, it's gonna load like that. Uh, and then wiring diagrams. In the case of Repair Connect, wiring diagrams are in point to point. So you're gonna see just the wires that you need. So we have three wires from the engine control module to the EGR pressure sensor. Uh, we could view it full screen, we can print, we can zoom in and all that. And if we go to remove and install, it's going to tell us how to do that. So it's going to walk us through the OEM information on that. There's my removal, cleaning and inspection, installation, etc. So you can see a lot of information there just on the engine code. Now I'm going to go back to my faults and you see down the left hand side, we also have our module. So in this case, we have two. So I can go into engine, it's gonna give me my data. And so you can go through and scroll through the data and see what it's doing. Uh, breaks, same thing, data list, calibrations. It's gonna bring you, we only have calibrations for the engine in this case, calibrations. Uh, so you know, I can set your road speed, engine, pr engine protections, tests. It's gonna load through engine tests. Gives us this big yellow screen that says to avoid personal injury. Observe all safety precautions and operator and service manuals. Put vehicle in park or neutral, chalk wheels, et cetera, and hit OK. And then you see there's a cylinder cutout test in this case. Now, on a real live vehicle, of course, there'd be more, way more robust tests that are available. Uh, you can do it either automatically or manually over here. Uh, and then all I got to do is sit start, and then it'll just cycle through and turn them on and turn them off. And then you can see how the RPM would change and the engine load would change there just in this example test. So it's got a lot of features and functions, like I said, more specific to the higher weight vehicles. Uh, and then if I wanna just uh, quit out of here, I hit the menu, go to end session, and then just, it goes back to the home screen. So that is medium versus light duty versus heavy duty scan tools. All right, so next week, uh, we're gonna talk about guided component testing, simplify your diagnostics. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a, a long time, you'll know that I like to talk about the guided component test function that's exclusive to snap because It really can help you when it comes at even starting out using a scope, or even if you're an advanced scope user, you can go through, you can still change the settings, you can set it up however you like it, but there's a lot of information at hand on the tool. So we're gonna talk through that uh, and a few more enhancements that have been coming down the road as well. So same time, same place as always, six and nine Eastern. Uh, if you go to snap on, uh, on Tuesdays, uh, if you go to snap on.com slash OT, you can register and join on Zoom. Otherwise the 6 p.m. Eastern class goes to YouTube. So it's youtube.com slash snap on diagnostics. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure you like and subscribe. And then the 9 p.m. Eastern class goes to my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash snap on Jason, all one word and uh, go give me a follow over there. And then also, if you wanna see any of the other past uh, topics in this series, uh, anywhere from ADOS through current probes and pressure transducers, which we just talked about last week, uh, they're all available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash snap on diagnostics. There's a playlist for live training. Now to questions, uh, as I said, this is a pre-recorded session. I'm traveling this week. So Zoom, if you do have a question, reply to your confirmation email. 
on Facebook, leave a comment. On YouTube, leave a comment. And I'll get to those as I can as I'm traveling. I also like to remind you about my buddy Keith, who also does free training for Snap-on. Um, his is on platform specific training. So if you got Zeus on Wednesday, Zeus and Zeus Plus on Wednesday, and then Apollo and Triton on Thursday. So the first hour is going to be scanner stuff, setup stuff. Let's set up your Wi Fi. Let's talk about security link. Let's talk about, um, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> Snap on Cloud. There we go. Uh, he'll talk about all that. Then he goes through code to completion on fast track intelligent diagnostics and uh, shows you how it's going to help you. Then after about a five minute break, then he'll go through about another 40 minutes or so on the scope and meter and guided component test functions of the tools. So this is only on Zoom. So snapon.com slash OT to register and hold your seat. It's made to have kind of have the tool in front of you so you can uh, play along while he's going up on his screen as well. With that, thank you very much for taking a little bit of time out of your day, spend a little bit of time with me. Hopefully we've uh, demystified some of the differences between light, medium, and heavy duty trucks, software, uh, scan tools, and all that. Uh, hopefully you join me next week for more guided component test talk. With that, enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good night and take care.